another session of working on Grotto. That is a um, web-based game that's being um, it's being worked on using uh, Django as the back end. So uh, my friend Wiley asked me to contr or asked me for some some help and uh, some guidance rather and some uh, you know to be a sounding board for Django sorts of ideas. But I love Django so much. I uh, volunteered to um, help him do some implementation as well. So I've been enjoying working on that and I've been enjoying sharing it with you here, my beloved uh, Twitch and YouTube viewers. So. Um, yesterday we worked a bit on uh, implementing a character test and I've been talking with Wiley about that and and, um, and about uh, you know how, how we might uh, pivot that a little bit rework that a little bit make it fit with the theme of the uh, game a little bit um, and then where to go from there so they may, there may be some more uh, some more work on that coming in the future to uh, tweak it and update it a little bit but today I'm gonna to work on implementing visits so the idea is and let me bring back up the wireframe that as you are going through the game you create your character um, and then eventually you make your way into the maze itself and when you're in the maze here um, you know you might have some inventory you might have this and that but you are definitely your character, that is, at least, is definitely um, in the room. So, and then uh, in addition to that, there's sort of a historicity of these uh, of these instances of being in the room. And when you leave the room, you may leave behind some sort of a clue as to your presence in the room or your former presence in the room. One second, I've got a question to field here from Wiley. Um, he's asking me about something in the um, something in the template. start this thing up we should just go to the docker compose up and I'm not going to rebuild it today because that was a fool let's see what it looks like here dang I love it I love how he jams on that damn thing it's going to work anyway um Let's see if we can see what he's asking about. We're gonna inspect this and um, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think what he's referring to is this, class and style. Um, uh, so I'm just gonna answer those. think if we go to a room we'll be able to see something different there yeah if so let's go check out So the way that's getting in there, and this is actually really relevant to um, to you know what we're doing here, right? It's a template thing. So what what's happening is we've got the um, the main template base.py, or I'm sorry, base.html, and in there 
in addition to doing a page title, we're doing a body class block, and we do a body style block. And then those are referenced, and, and uh, uh, um, the content of that block is actually specified in that room.html. So we extend base, and we give a title. And here I can make that all one line, and it'll actually be a little bit cleaner. Same with this cl body class. If I make it all one line, then we won't get that uh, those weird new lines that sort of creep in there. I don't think the new lines actually affect anything. I think that the CSS still works the way we expect it to. Um, but I think that the, the the page source probably looks a little bit better if we uh, put those on single lines. So that's where that's coming from. And let me just chat that to Wiley here. Um, That sets him straight on uh, on his thinking there. So yes, we're focused today on this visit idea. So right now, you know, I'm not a character. I'm I'm just an admin floating around here. But if I were logged in as a character, uh, wait, who am I logged in? At? Let's just log out. I want to see. I don't think. Oh, log out is actually not wired up. Let's see if I can get to admin. Okay, so I'm logged in as other Paul right now. Let's get a, let's get a, uh, a thing, whatever you want to call it here. Private tab is what I love to call it. Paul. Right, so I've got a uh, character here. Ideally, this character should be able to, to sort of go forth into the, um, into the puzzle. So there, are, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, um, I think if we look at the wireframe, we can probably, oh god, we can probably zoom out a little bit and see, uh, yeah, enter the grotto, I think is the, uh, is the trick there. So instead of return to guild hall, that should change to enter the grotto. That's a quick change. Um, I'm just going to do that real quick. I won't those character... HTML. Oh no, we do that in the view. Character build a view. Create it. Uh, return to or enter. Enter the grotto. And doing this. Um, Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to need a way to sort of project that this character, and this is so that the, the, the back end can be sane about things. We need some way to project the which character is entering the grotto and when we enter the grotto we'll sort of randomly pick a room where the character is dropped into but we need to be sure that it's a specific character and not tied only to the user that we're thinking about the user is easy um, so what are we thinking about here um, I kinda think that we make this actions um, thing a little bit more complicated. But um, 
I'm wondering if I should tackle that first before I think about visits proper. Um, and since I'm not doing, you know, since I'm sort of ad hoc testing this as I go by, you know, visiting the page on the website, you know, uh, on the, the dev server, and not as, as uh, uh, distinct from like a test driven programming, um, uh, it, it kind of behooves me to do this thing in an order that makes it playable as we go. So I'm thinking I want to fix this link to enter the grotto and actually start getting a character into a room and understanding what that's going to look like. So the the we're not saving a character in state or anything anything like that. Um, we are uh, um, um, Uh, we're gonna sort of do this as though it's a, a REST API. So if the the user knows the URL that they're trying to get to, they can they can always sort of get back to their character. Um, so instead of guilt, like we, we kind of need to think of a new a new um, URL to explore for what this might be. So we, this might be like a character, and then a PK. Okay, um, and then um, enter. Something like that. That way, you know, the, the character that we are, um, you know, this, this isn't a RESTful API that we're thinking about here, but this gives a command to, um, This this is uh, effectively saying to the to the back end, this character is entering, and then whatever state changes are happening are are being applied to that character. Um, but the action mix in that we put together yesterday is pretty simple, and it doesn't actually allow for that sort of format string thing to happen. So. Um, uh, let's um, let's look at that and see if we can make that more flexible. So the actions here, it's just taking each action and sort of going through it. Um, we would need to do some intervention in here before we pop it into place to ensure that this is actually um, being replaced effectively. Um, so we have to think a little bit about what what our um, what, what variables are actually available in there, right? But let's let's get some nuts and bolts out of the way first, and let's do. Um, Actions equals a plain empty list, and then for um, action in self dot actions, I want to actions append uh, dot append. Um, I want to go through each key of the action and do the rendering here. So for um, key and value in action dot um, items, it's a dict in there, so this should do the thing. Um, let's do our action. Here I want to say uh, action key is equal to value dot format and then um, I just want to see if this works it's kind of a I mean it it, it could work give whatever self is into format 
and this, uh, and uh, um, and let that go. Um, I just kind of want to see if it if it runs. See, if, give it a, give it a quick shot, real quick. So I'm here. Um, I am. This is the screen I want to be on. So let's. Ooh, didn't like it. A pen takes it. Oh, zero given because I didn't finish out the job. So we have to append, and there are action. And then those become actions for the context. So we sort of rendered this thing. Oh, I love it. It worked right out of the freaking gate. Um, that's cool. So this obviously won't work because we haven't set up any of the um, any of the sort of uh, actual game mechanics in there. So we still have to make the URL character three or character enter so that something happens there. Um, but the very fact that it rendered correctly just makes me pleased as punch. So um, that's a cool little update that worked better than I expected it would work straight away. So hooray. Now, um, what, yeah, let's think about what that URL ought to be. I just sort of randomly picked character PK enter um, down there at the bottom left in the status bar you can see it and then likewise up here I've got it like that um, I don't necessarily want to make a new top level thing for this um, it'd be easier if it was just tacked onto the end of this like enter right there can make the URL much more straightforward. However, we're getting into we're getting out of the scope of the character and more into the scope of the game itself, right? Like the 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 character is now interacting with the game board by by doing this enter. So it's no longer a, a it's no longer a, th a a guild activity, right? It's not a um, it's not having to do with the character in and of itself or the group of characters that a user has so or the, the broader collection of characters that exist in the game um, so I'm yeah I'm I'm kind of thinking that there needs to be another app in the mix, right? A little bit here, we've got the, the, the main app, the project app, Grotto. We've got Character Builder, which is what deals with creating characters. We've got Map Builder, which deals with making elements of the map. What we need is a an actual game app which perhaps the project app is perfect for that. Just pop a view in here, pop a URL in there, and everything's off to the races. Um, that's the simplest approach. And until the game mechanics get complicated enough to uh, merit splitting out into a separate engine app or something like that, I'm just gonna build it out in here. So, um, we have some options as to how we actually do that. Um, the, the sort of easiest approach is just to mix it all in there and let it be refactored later. And um, that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. So let's, let's just go ahead and make um, Let's make an endpoint for game. Include game.urls. And then 
I'm going to make a new folder in Grotto here. I'm going to call it game. And in game, I'm going to make a file called urls.py. Pop that over to the second screen there. And, um, and we can start to do a sort of self-similar thing here. Uh, I don't need to have any of that. I do want to have a I could namespace it uh, so let's let's see about that I want to grab yeah by defining an app name in this uh, I think it gives us some special powers so game so my app name will be it sort of namespaces all of the URL patterns that appear so I don't need you uh, I'll keep you I need you and I don't need you. Uh, I don't think I need include either. Um, so any of the sort of game actions will have their API sort of tucked away here in game. And it could be expedient at some point to actually make that a REST API where we are um, we're more or less um, able to give restful instruction about what's happening in the game. Uh, I don't, you know, it, where the state is, is it, it's debatable whether or not a game can be stateless, or like client stateless, but I'll set that aside for now and say that it will operate like a REST API. Um, so path, uh, I said that it would look like character, and then we could have pk in here. That's going to be an int pk. I want to check the syntax on that, make sure. I, OK, it should be angle brackets and not uh, braces there. So int pk and then enter. In fact, if we were doing this using Django REST framework, we could, we could simplify life a little bit but I don't really want to introduce a new dependency right now and until we get until we get to some level of complication uh, it's just not not worth um, messing with all that so we'll kind of do this um, a little bit the hard way for now and then maybe in the future do a little refactor uh, if we if we keep working this way uh, mainly uh, I'm trying to write this code so that I can hand it to Wiley and he'll be able to work with it. So if I start introducing Django REST framework in the mix, that's going to increase the barriers to entry for him. And that's ultimately undesirable for, for this project. So um, yeah, I'm going to keep it sort of vanilla Django where I can. So we have enter. I want to give that a views dot um, enter grotto view as view name enter cool there is no views in that directory so let's um, let's make one use.py and at the very least I need a redirect view um, and the I called it the integrato view let's make that real quick um, I want that to be a redirect view. And there are a few there are a few sort of checks that we want to do whenever we are um Whenever we are receiving this endpoint, like whenever we're whenever whenever somebody calls the get 
for this, we want to make sure that some stuff happens before uh, before the, the process goes through. Um, but let's consult our uh, redirect view and see what pattern name we've got. So, um, and actually, uh, I should pull up CCBV. CCBV, and let's look at redirect view. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen reader and you haven't seen CCBV, it's tremendous. CCBV.co.uk. Um, it gives you direct insight into all this, the source code of any of these class-based views that we love so much from Django. Um, get redirect URL pattern URL reverse. Okay, so we gotta give it args and quargs whenever we do the get redirect URL. Um, when we do get, we are passing in the args and the quargs. Okay, that's easy enough. The quarg there is already going to be PK. Um, okay, I think this will work fine. So, the pattern name that we're going to be redirecting to is going to be a room. So, we need to go to like map builder. And I'll check on that URL now. URL map builder. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. So room. That's what we're thinking about there. And that is in the map builder app. Um, that's where we're redirecting to. Uh, we want to let's let's check and see what what happens with get here. Um, we're actually getting this is purely dealing with the actual redirect. So we want that to happen, but we don't want it to happen right away. So let's def a new get function self request args quargs. And eventually we want to return super Eventually, but first we want to make sure that uh, everything is good, right? We want to um, we want to make sure that the character exists. Is this uh, an actual character? Is the character already in the uh, uh, the map? Um, so it, it, if there's no character, then uh, 404. Damn it, 404. Um, if the character is already in the map, uh, go to that character. Uh, else, um, choose a random. To enter, send character there. All right, so that gives us a rough framework of what we want to do. This super get request args quargs is the send character there part. Um, I'm going to um, choose the room PK or the room color slug as it were um, and send that in as a quarg so so yeah um, send character there redirect user to appropriate room all right so first things first um, the keyword argument that we should get there is PK right so we'll check that we'll say PK equals uh, quarks dot get um, PK 
okay. And actually, let's pop that. That way it'll throw. Um, actually, no, I take that back. Let's get it. And then here we can say, um, try character.objects.get pk equals pk. And um, we want to store this as character. We want to accept a, a does not exist in case we find that that character isn't real, in which case we want to throw that 404, which I think we have uh, precedent for here. Bam. Uh, HTTP 404. The character does not exist. indents here give me fits okay um, so now that we know the character we can say um, and this is where we have to start thinking about what changes with our with our API um, okay Wiley's chatting with me again yeah, that one is empty because there isn't a block body class or block body uh, style. Oh, I misspelled that before. Style. See what that thing's called. Character test generate. Hopefully I got them set straight on that. Um, I don't actually need this to be open at all. Right, so is the character already in the map? So here's where we have to start thinking about the actual um, sort of changes to the back end that need to happen to think about visits. So how will I know if the character is in the map? Presently, there's nothing here that tells me who is in the map. There is a um, a sort of historical model. Oh god, um, that we can uncomment here, and we can uh, we can see that a character may have been in a room, past tense, um, but we don't see who's in the room right now in any way. And this is still a a, sort of a new idea. So uh, this isn't even implemented yet, irrespective of that. Um, we have some options, right? We could store on the room who all is in it. Uh, the other alternative to that is to store on the character what room they are in. Um, The troublesome quality here is that uh, we need to watch out for circular imports, right? I've already have character imported over here. If 
from character builder.models. If I import map builder.models here, like if I were to do from map map builder models import room, then suddenly we have a circular import where this file wants to import this file and this file wants to import this file and it just goes back and forth forever. So that's to be avoided. So what I'm going to suggest to deal with that uh, is um, either that we reference the character from the room, which I think is a sloppy solution because there's a um, plurality to that relationship. Like there's a lot of characters possibly in the room um, that lends itself really well to being a foreign key on the character. A character can only be in one room at a time. So I'm inclined here to, um, I'm inclined here to uh, um, reference the room, like give a foreign key. Here, if we just do a room. then that gets us into a, a pretty nice state, except for the circular import that we have to deal with here. So to get rid of, to deal with that circular import, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna actually just relocate this visit over here to um, the character builder app. It doesn't necessarily need to exist in the map builder. Um, and it has just as much to do with characters as it has to do with rooms. So we could really pick either one and it works totally fine. Oh, hi, little bee. What do you got there? Oh, do you have a stick? Did you get a stick? Oh, look at that stick. All right. Um, so over here, that deals with that deals with the circular import problem pretty well. It means that we just have to import room from over here and no big deal. Um, this is fine. I want to put a default there um, as default equals okay so I'll, I'll stick with that same usage that he uses over there now um, and then to get now oh wait he already imports time zone. Maybe I import time zone That's a vestige from the polls app. So I'll stick to how that's used. Cool. Um, so that didn't actually, um, oh yeah, it did. By adding room here as a field on character, that gives us some idea of what room and it gives us a place at least to store what room the character exists in. So with that bit of uh, change in mind, we're going to um, continue work on our game view here. So if character.room is not none, then... Um, something else happens, right? We're going to redirect to a different room. Um, let's let's actually deal with that now. Um, we're going to need a variable here, room color, room slug. I hate, no, okay, slug, there we go. Um, and right now it's nothing. And then if the character is in a room, then we're going to just say room slug is equal to character dot room dot I think it's uh, color slug um, here we're going to uh, we're gonna pick a random room Somebody texted me. Uh, 
Um, and we already have a pattern for picking a random thing. Uh, where did we have that? We, we worked on it yesterday. It's probably here in, nope, not in that views. What happened here? Oh yeah, I changed, I'll just leave that alone. Um, changed you, let's save you. I changed do you to go away. I don't think you have it either. Where was that? In character builder, perhaps. Did I import random here? That's gonna give us, yeah, random choice. Where are you at, choice? Got it. Right, so this pattern is pretty nice. I think I pulled it off Stack Exchange. We'll talk about it one time here as well. Um, we're going to look through all of the rooms. We're going to pick out all of the IDs. We're gonna flatten that out into a list and we're gonna pick one of those things or those PKs and that's gonna give us our room here and what we actually care about isn't the room it's the room slug so um, we'll just after we get that do color slug beautiful um, we actually I do want the room let me take that back I want the room because we have to send the character there Right, so I want to do character dot room equals room. Uh, oh, I just realized that I can make this a little bit cleaner by reversing the logic a little bit. So whole uh, 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 hold up a little bit. Character dot save. So all of this stuff, if it happens before that, then it's a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna reverse the logic here. Um, taking this outside, and I will say instead, if character.room is none, then choose a random room. And then at the end of that happening, the character will have a room to be in, which means room slug can be populated there, which means we can give it this keyword argument. There shouldn't be any args to deal with on this but we do want to have the um, we do want to have the URL filled out correctly I think I closed that file for some reason so URLs dot do, 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 do. Um, yeah color slug is the actual keyword argument that we should use there so color slug equals bingo and that means we don't even need that cool so if we give this a try I think I need to fix one little thing first it's in the actions because I updated the URL here to be game. So going back to this, oh God, why can't it be reached? That's a dirty lie. Why can't you import that? Did I misspell something? Not builder.models room. You're there. Why you being a punk? Oh, okay. It reloaded fine this time. I still don't know why this didn't import fine, but either way, that's a problem for another for another session. Um, so, are you going to do the thing now? Why aren't you doing the thing now? So it's in there twice. 
noise. Ah, okay. So it's just repeating that every time I save. So there is something wrong. Why? Why though? Map builder models. Import room. Oh, let's get rid of you first. this restart it see if that makes a difference oh boy okay so now it's being a babby let's see about uh, make migrations no module name game okay that might do it um, doesn't like that. I think I can fix this easily by putting a new file here in game called init.py. I think just creating that makes this thing a module that can be found. Mm, nope, wrong. Let's do one more thing here. Let's keep in mind the, the inheritance of all this. It's expecting to look from this, uh, uh, um, from the base dir, whatever the project base directory is. So this is actually inside Grotto. So let's see if that makes a difference for us. Um, Make migrations. Hey, it liked it that time. So we needed to put the full path to that URL's file from the top level of the of the, the project. So now that that's sorted out, we should be able to go here. We oh, no, we shouldn't. I'm going to migrate. And then we'll restart the app by bringing this thing up. Hopefully now everything behaves the way we expect and we have a correct thing there. And then hopefully if we click this, it's gonna bop us. Okay, character's not defined, no problem. I don't see any problem here. Um, that is in, where is that? That is in views, yes, grotto. It's because we didn't import it. Um, So I want to do this from character builder. I don't need those other things. Room is not defined. Same idea here from um, map builder models import room. Choice is not defined. All right, uh, so we're just going to keep bopping through these things. That's the problem when you copy pasta code. Um, you don't always get all the dependencies that come along with it. So I just keep on keeping on with this it's sort of hack and slash at this thing until it works for you. And I think, you know, we could be more systematic about it. 
for sure. Um, all right, so now my character is quote unquote in the India Red Room, and that should be reflected in the character sheet itself. I think I was using Gwisin, and I'm there in the India Red Room, so no problem. Um, whenever I leave this room by clicking on an exit, I would hope that it records a presence in that room, uh, a visit rather. Um, now let's check on the behavior. If I go back, build, then Gwisin and I click enter the grotto, it should take me back to the India Red Room because I'm already there. I'm not able to change rooms from that play, from from inter, from the character sheet, basically. Um, and then we could also expand the, um, we, we could expand the, the this guild view to say where Wissen is as well if we wanted. Um, that might be a logical choice to make a little later. Um, Faye right now is still not in the grotto, so if I click enter the grotto, it ought to take me to a, a place. Um, and that's cool. And then if I click around, uh, I'm guessing nothing happens, right? If I click Cornflower Blue Room, and then I go back a couple times to Fey, and then hit Enter the Grotto, it takes me back into Light Golden Rod Room. So there's no, uh, there's no tracking of where I'm going right now, which is uh, the next step to work on. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break, and I will be right back in about a minute and a half. And we're back. So, like I was saying before, we want to start tracking movements between rooms. So, to 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 address that, um, to address that, we need to have some more endpoints in game. Um, Right now, um, right now the links between the rooms, right? If we if we just look at this, it's going to take us to the yellow yellow kite faced room. Um, it's not sending our player there per se. It's just um, moving our browser there. So we need to have something that's pushing our user. Our character rather 
uh, through to this new room. So I'm going to say that we ought to um, we ought to have a new endpoint for that. Let's um, let's explore that a little bit. So the the URL that I would think we could do for that is gonna look similar to the old URL. It's gonna be move this time, and we'll have a slug and the color slug indicating the room that we're thinking about going to. Um, so move. That's gonna make we're gonna have to change our our exits a little bit here. We're gonna have to change what what this actually says, um, and we may like what we're kind of getting into is that there's a different view for a, a sort of uh, uh, an admin or like a god in this game um, versus a character, right? The admin should still see the same old links that they. Have been seeing, right? Just rooms, yellow kite, yellow kite faced, so that the admin can move between them without issue. But the user, rather the the character, should see this this other this other new URL here, um, indicating a move. And then each time the character hits that, they're gonna be, uh, you know, moving. And eventually, they'll be redirected to the color page that we um, uh, um, I lost track of my what I was saying there. So we're gonna make a view, and uh, one second. Okay, so class here. Um, I want this to be a redirect view as well. And these actually a little bit that's the same. Do, do, do. Um, so we want to do a few a few checks here. Is this an actual character? Um, and what this is, what we're sort of getting at is that we may want to have a uh, mix in or something that is going to deal with some of this precursor work that's becoming a little bit boilerplate. Um, just something to uh, um, make it a little less of a pain in the butt. So, in addition to checking the PK, we also want to check the color slug. So, color slug. Um, quarks, uh, rather color slug equals quarks dot. And I'm just going to change it to room slug because I don't like that camel case thing. Quarks dot get color slug. And then, same idea as the character, we want to make sure this is a real thing. So we'll try to retrieve that room and. Um, Actually, we want to make sure that the character is only moving between the rooms that it that that are accessible. Um, so let's do a little bit more sort of checking here, a little more validation before we get to that. So if character dot room is none, then this is a bad endpoint. We need to do something. Character is not in puzzle. It's not in grotto. Um, and then, so this bit guarantees us that we have a. Um, should I be? I think I should be returning. Okay, I 
think I need to return that HTTP 404. Let's check the usage there. I need to pull over zeal. So HTTP. Okay, alt oh, doesn't do anything there. 404, 4040. Yeah. I think we need to do. Oh, it's raise. Interesting. Okay, it's an exception. Cool. I had didn't really think about that as I was using it the first time. So anytime we use that, we are raising. Um, so then, as we look for a room, I want to, um, I want to see if it's adjacent to where the character is. So character dot room dot exits dot all. Think is the right thing to, to, to use there. Let's check the model and be sure about that. Uh, room exits, it's a many to many field, so the all gets us everything. We don't actually want to check all of them, we want to, uh, we want to get the uh, color slug like that. And I'm just going to shortcut it because we don't actually need the room slug for anything. And then accept. Uh, we got, we're going to get a weird character, uh, uh, rather a weird related manager error. Um, will we? I don't know. Maybe we're just going to get a room. Room that does not exist. Let's see. Uh, HTTP 404. Um, I take it all back. Room slug. Uh, no, no, screw that. Room is not accessible. And then finally, at the end of all that. We can set the character's room appropriately. Um, and, and off it goes. So this will this will do This will do the moving between the rooms that we want it to do, um, but it will not leave any breadcrumb. So we can, if we were doing this up, uh, if I was doing this as a as a billable job, then I would probably make this into a service. If I was doing this as a job that I was going to be maintaining for a long time, then um, I would do this as a service, uh, like a service.py in there to control um, movements between rooms. Um, and eventually this could be refactored into that pattern, into that, that uh, service pattern. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna do it the simple way. If we've made it thus far, if we've made it to here, then I'll take note of the old room or the exiting room. Uh, uh, old room is fine. Equals character dot room. certain I'm going to be getting a related does not exist exception here. We'll sort that out when we get there. Um, so as we move into a new room, we should leave behind a visit. So visit um, dot objects dot create. Uh, let me pull up the model here so we can get a look at 
look at it. Room equals old room. Uh, character equals character. And that should leave a record behind anytime we move between rooms so that we can see this easily. Admin. Visit admin here. No inline. Okay. So that gives us the machinery we want. see when a visit has been logged now and the last thing is to actually get the URL right so let's just hack it right now if I click on blue bottle room oh what happened why are you tweaking man why Oh, it's probably the same type of errors as before. I really wish that the debug was working a little bit better and would make note of that. Visit. I think I need to do, wait, did I already do migrations for visit? Yeah, create model visit, no problem. thing is being a baby. Character got room that color slug. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. Um, okay, let's see about doing a migrate. Okay, visit is not defined. Oh not where I expected it to break. Okay, no problem. Visit. And it should let's hopefully run this time. Good. All right. Cool. So blue bottle is the slug there. The URL. Oh, what happened here? What? make sure that everything is right. With Fay, I enter the grotto. I'm in the light goldenrod room. The blue bottle room is accessible. So if I sort of manually create the URL here, game character, I think I was character. What character was I? Character two. Game character two. trailing slash. Notice this has a trailing slash and this does not. Quick fix, we'll put a trailing slash right there and everything is good with the world. Cool, that moved me to the blue bottle room. If I check out my character with PK2, I'm now in the blue bottle room. Likewise, I should have left a visit of Thay in the light goldenrod room. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful beam footage. Okay, um, let's clean up the this index here. It's kind of ugly. Um, so let's do list display char character. field stamp date it's 
cool. All right, now when we refresh, when we refresh this, cool. It's going to tell us the Fae was in the Goldenrod room at that time. Cool, 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 cool. Now. Um, <clears throat> now we need to get the right URL there in the room itself. Room.html. Um, this is the simple thing that we're doing here. Um, what we want is for this to appear differently. For different people. I'm here as a if I'm here as a character if I'm here as a character then I want to have a different URL to go to so let's figure out what that's supposed to be this is gonna be like game move um, character.pk and then color slug. I think that works. Um, so this is if character. Yo, what's up, Fire Lord Nora? Nora? Yeah, I'm working on a. Um, it's a Django based web game called Grotto. It's a little. Uh, um, I'll show you the wireframe here. It's like a. Um, it's like a maze game where you create a character after you lo log in. You maybe ask some questions about you know, the, the, the character of your character. We'll have your character generated and your character can then enter into the maze proper and sort of traipse around the maze and do fun stuff in there. Um, it's just an easy game for, uh, for friends to play. So, um, yeah, it's a friend of mine named Wiley that's uh, building it, that's designing it rather, and I'm, I'm helping him implement it. It's fun stuff. So um, yeah, I was just uh, making a quick adjustment to, um, I was actually just implementing some of the game mechanic of tracking the users moving through the game. Um, and I'm adjusting it so that the room that you're in is aware of whether you're there as a character or as a super user. Um, and sort of allow you to color the room according to what character you are. And um, I'm gonna be dropping this stream in about uh, five minutes and I'll come back after I eat lunch. Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of wrap up here before I drop this thing off. The the thing I added here to room is a little uh, if statement switching on whether or not character exists in the context. So um, we need to make sure the character gets into that context for room. So let's look at the view for map builder and let's. Um, we might want to implement something here to uh, take into account um, yeah to take into account whether or not a 
whether or not we're viewing this thing as a as having a character in the room or not that's a confusing idea um, yeah it's a little bit more confusing than I want to take on just before I stop for lunch so with that in mind I'm going to stop this stream uh, pretty soon here next minute or two and uh, pick it up after after eating um, yeah so thanks for joining and chatting with me again Fire Lord Nora uh, sorry to ditch you so quickly after you joined hopefully you can join me again after uh, after I eat some food thanks for tuning in uh, take care of yourself and I'll see you again next time <laughs>